Hey, how's your long weekend going? You got time to talk penny stocks? Great, me too. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the Memorial Day weekend. It is Sunday, May 28th. Now we're going to take a look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking at stocks that are under $5, regardless of what market they're on. And what designates them as hot, in my opinion, is their chart setup. It's really not about the news to me. A little piece of news can make a hot chart run, but a hot catalyst on a cold chart can go to waste. So I'm looking for charts that have breakout potential or have a lot of volume coming in or the momentum is just pushing it to the moon. And I got three of those to share with you today. So the first one we're going to take a look at is Eco Depot. It's a sticker ECDP. She's been quiet for a long time. Since October of 2021, we haven't had any new news presses, filings, nothing. And the charts look it very docile and flat. But the chart started moving as soon as she came out with two news presses this month. She's changing her name, she's changing her direction, and she's made an acquisition. But what's curious is that the chart started moving five days before the news came out. And there's been nothing for 18 months. So somebody knew something and it is still growing right now. So I think we need to look at this. So ECDP, she finished today just under 68 cents and just over 20% gains. She is on the pink tier, but she's current and she's got those two precious green ticks we're always looking for. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. There's a lot of important information that's being represented by these green ticks that's verified behind the scenes. So if you're going to get into especially a pink on the OTC, you want as much validated information as you can get. So these are real important. But if you're just doing a quick swing or a day trade, don't worry about that too much. So what is this company all about? Well, they're going through some changes and they've actually caught up with their business description. The news has only been out for two weeks and this has already been updated. Eco Depot is a Nevada company that acquires, manages, and develops eco-friendly assets. Eco Depot is in the process of changing its focus and is acquiring a new innovative molecular identification technology focused on homeland security applications. So looking at that news, you can see there was nothing since October of 2021. Then we had one on the 15th of this month and the 26th. Now they talk about change of direction, they talk about name change, but they weren't talking about the acquisition in the headlines. So let's just focus in on everything that's going on here. So this came out May 15th. Eco Depot announces change of direction change of name, and an acquisition for the development of innovative technology to address homeland security issues. They tell us here that Eco Depot has not been able to source key nano raw materials from its supplier in the Ukraine over the past 15 months, obviously because of the war with Russia. Now what they were doing before they've had their change of direction, they have a subsidiary called Eco Pave. They've engineered and patented an eight millimeter cement polymer. It's a based crust that goes over existing asphalt and it's guaranteed to last 20 years. None of our asphalt roads last 20 years. And this is only eight millimeters thick. So it's really thin, but they can't make this without this raw material from the Ukraine. So they've now moved into another direction. They haven't abandoned that. It's just been put on the back burner. Meanwhile, they are now working with this new hybrid radio infrared laser frequency scanning technology. This technology is focused on detecting gunpowder, handguns, drugs, explosive, landmines, viruses, and bacteria related to homeland defense. By combining radio and infrared frequencies, our technology can detect these things without touching anybody. Everything has a vibration. There's these inaudible sounds, radio frequencies that are being put off from things. And once you signaturize them, once you recognize that unique sound that gunpowder puts off, that vibration, you can detect it. And that's what they've got. So that could be a pretty hot product. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's jump on over there and see. Uh, a little over double, 
a little over 100%, going from 176,000 to 362,000. Share structure for the company. This isn't bad. At first glance, it doesn't look too great. Outstanding share count, 168 million. Now, I normally don't trust the numbers here at the unrestricted. Unrestricted is what's on the open market, which is also the same definition for float. I always think of unrestricted as the float. Well, they got the float as pretty much the same thing too. But a lot of times these numbers can't be trusted. So what you can always do is look here. The number of restricted shares. These are the shares not allowed on the market, held by insiders, management, hedge funds, institutions, partners. Well, take that number there and subtract it from that number. That'll normally tell you what the float is. Well, you can see we've got about 10 million. So we've got a low float with this. Financials for Eco Depot. All right, she has been paying her bills and that's about it, maybe paying themselves. We got three zeros we have to put behind any of the numbers on these charts. At the end of 2022, she had only made $36,000 and they got to keep $12,000. I doubt they had enough money to pay their employees. 12,000 doesn't go far. Quarterly, uh, we don't have anything going on here. So this is the big deal. They don't have any revenues coming in. They haven't told us any revenues were coming in. We don't even know that this technology is ready to go right yet. All I know is that the chart is hot. It is breaking out right now. It was breaking out before the news came out and there hasn't been anything out for 18 months. Somebody knew something, right? That's the way I see it. So everything is lining up. Let's see what filings we've got here. We've got nothing since 2005. As I said, outside of financials, we haven't had any new filings or any new news but we've got a great low float. We've got two new pieces of news talking about a name change. They're going to Eco Defense now, not Eco Depot. And they're not changing their ticker, uh, but they are changing their type of business, not giving up the Eco Pave Cement business. That just is gonna be on the back burner until Ukraine gets back in the picture. So let's go take a look at that chart. You wanna look at this stock? You better strap in because it's going to the moon. This is ticker ECDP, Eco Depot. And we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, also known as TOS. And you can get this just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we got a six month, four hour view here. We got a low in December of six cents and it just a straight bar of price bars here for quite a while. And today, Friday actually, she hit a high of 68 cents. Now we do have some supports and resistances I've snagged up here, but I had to go all the way back to three years to get most of these. She was at 558 three years ago. She was also down here at 324. And more recently, she was at about 50 cents. And as you can see, she hasn't had this kind of volume since three years ago. Let's come on back down to that six month, four hour view and zoom in on where it all started to change right here on the 10th, right? On the 10th, she started to move and the news did not come out until the 15th. So she started here at seven cents and she ran up to 21 cents, 300% gains without any filings, any news since October of 2021. Really? For no cause, no reason? And then coincidentally, the news comes out on the 15th. Boom, we get another riptide. She did cool off here and consolidate, keeping most of those gains. And then she took another pre-rise, right? She starts rising before the news came out of the 26th. And then she took off again. All of our SMAs are beautifully laid out. All of our oscillators are pushing to the moon and on fire. Our volume has dribbled down a little bit when she was consolidating, but it is starting to build up right now. This looks very good. 20 day, one hour view. That looks really good too. There's our low of seven cents flatlining, all those bars just as thin as a cracker. And then she took off on the 10th, hit that first resistance, bounced back, hit the 50 day and then crush this one. And she's stretching for the next resistance right here. Now I did just pretty much spitball these in there. They could be a little higher or lower, but they're in the right region. So we finished the day at a high and I can't even tell if she's pulled back yet. Osculators, 
PPO, percentage price oscillator, and our MACD, they're cousins to each other, read them the same way. Both are going up. Our RSI is still on fire. Everything is looking very strong. Five day, five minute. So now our low is 32 cents. Look how she is sitting firmly on that 50 day SMA until she decided she wanted to fly. Didn't even go to her 20. Just jumped to the nine day SMA light as helium floating up there came back down met the 50 now she's taking another launch and it looks like she finished the day on a high now i'm going to come down to the one minute just to see if she pulled back she did not she hit a high and boink she stopped now i normally expect nine out of ten times when you see a high bubble come into the picture it's like hitting your head on the ceiling and the first thing you do is pull back so there should be a little bit of pullback here and then a bounce back up to get back to it. So everything looks like that's exactly what's going on. All of our oscillators are pushing up. Our price is pushing up. She's on top of the nine. We've got a high level there. Everything looks gorgeous. Come on, folks. ECDP. The only thing she's not doing right now is making revenue, but she's getting a lot of interest. Got another hot OTC pink for you. This is ticker BCII, BCII Enterprises. Now her chart is on fire. It's just like the last chart. All this momentum came in. She started to lift and she is just pushing and pushing, looking like she's going to the moon. Now she has had two big pieces of news 30 days and 60 days ago about deals she has made that are helping her to progress her products, which is a big deal. She's got some very unique products that I can see being hot to the business market out there. And they need something because right now they are considered a shell risk. They say they used to be a shell company, but they got business going. This tells us their business isn't making any money. They are not reporting any revenues, and that's a problem. And the news makes it sound like revenue should be coming around the corner, though they haven't come directly out and said that. Still, the news is big, and the charts are hot. So, BCII, she finished the day on Friday at $0.16 cents with about 18.5% gains. She is on the pink tier totally current got those two green ticks looking really good and as i said she is considered a shell risk right now now they got a great business description down here it's a great foundation because it gives us some history about what the company is doing and what they're about the company referred to as bcii was formerly a shell company on December 15, 2021, the company completed the acquisition and acquired 100% of NFT Clearing Inc. Then, in July of 2022, the company purchased 100% of YourInfo.com. Now, YourInfo is a technology. It is designed to enable users to download all the personal information that any website has gathered about them, whether it be Facebook, Google, Amazon, then their new company, the NFT Clearing, is going to translate that information and put a key into an NFT and you're going to sell that key to your personal data. If somebody's going to make money on your personal data, why shouldn't it be you? And that's what they're doing. They've got a program where you can leech and take all the information they've gathered on you, the stuff they know is sellable, and then you're going to hold that information locked up in a cloud, and you're going to sell the key so that certain people can get in there and get that information after they pay you for it. Pretty neat concept, huh? So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Again, we've got just a little over 100% gains, going from 105,000 to 221,000. Share structure. All right. Um, I did go look this up just out of curiosity. We've got outstanding share count of 47 million. I don't trust any of the numbers here, and I came up with two numbers. One was 26 million. One was 8 million don't have a clue which one it is that's why I don't like looking them up because you really don't get a concrete answer best answer we can always fall back on is it's going to be less than the outstanding shares that's the only one we know is true financials for BCII we have nothing right she's a shell risk nothing annually Bam. nothing quarterly they've got no money coming in hopefully that is going to change here real soon disclosures for BCII wow 
We've got no new disclosures since 2019. However, all of their financials are caught up. That's the important thing right there. All right, let's take a look at that news. Let's see where the news goes back to. Um, this is back to 2022. BCII Enterprises, Inc. acquires innovative data company, Your Info, which they just got done telling us they did. Then we have two pieces of news, one that came out March 28th and one that came out April 28th. And I want to share both of these with you. This is the one that came out March 28th. Created Inc., ticker CRTD, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this company, and BCI Enterprises execute a joint venture. They tell us here that Created, the parent company of Vocal, today announced it has signed a joint venture, a letter of intent, with BCII Enterprises. The platform will leverage BCII's YourInfo.com technology and empower individuals to monetize their personal data and make informed decisions about how it is used. The future platform offers a significant opportunity to generate new revenue streams for both companies. That's good. This company needs the money. The jointly owned technology platform is expected to launch later this year and further updates will be provided in due course. With our expertise, we can generate new revenue streams for both companies. In addition to the fundamental opportunity, the potential to spin off shares of the created BCI joint venture directly to created shareholders creates another corporation action in our own going battle against the shorts. Now that is more about created. This joint venture here between created and BCII, they say they could spin off something that could generate free shares for created. Why not BCII too? We should get them as well. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. And we're not going to look at Created. That is worthy of your due diligence. Created is doing a lot. They have got their fingers into a lot. They are fighting the shorters. Uh, they're a company that care about their shareholders. That's the kind of company you want to be looking at. And we got that other news press that came out April 28th. The company made another deal. They entered into a 50-50 joint venture with Million Ways. They are going to market the first ever AI investment tool that immediately analyzes corporate management personality. This AI investment tool isn't for trading. It's not for stocks and bonds or gold. It's for people. It judges people's emotional stability so that corporations can hire the right people before they invest into them. They tell us down here that the company executed a 50-50 joint venture with Million Ways to market a jointly designed AI investment analysis tool that immediately determines management personality attributes for a monthly subscription. Million Ways has developed the world's first emotionally intelligent artificial intelligence. At present, AI is based on machine learning, not people learning. It lacks the emotional intelligence necessary to understand a user's natural emotions and underlying motivations. They have taught the AI to understand us by listening to the way we talk, looking at how we write sentences. And they tell us that this technology is going to give an immediate customer feedback on any user-generated text or audio to text data with at least 500 words. And it does not matter if all the words are aggregated over time or written all at one time, as long as they come from the same person. So for example, your Twitter account, your Facebook account, that's all they need. They just need 500 words over time. So they're gonna get all your sentences and paragraphs together and then they're gonna be able to judge you figure out what sort of person you are, emotionally speaking. And you may not get the job if you don't fit the bill. So they've got these very interesting products that they're working with. They're working with other companies now on 50-50 basis. Money should start coming in. Yes, the news is old, but the chart is hot now. Let me show you. As I said, this one has already left the launch pad. She is flying high. This is ticker BCII, one year, one day chart. We got a low bubble here of about two and a half cents mid-December, and it was Friday. We hit a 52-week high, almost 19 cents. 
As I said, this is a year chart and you can see only this bottom resistance support is in the yearly chart. The rest of these had to go all the way three years back to grab them. On the one year chart, we are crushing that 200 day SMA. We ran through that and just kept on going even through our first resistance, approaching our second one right now. And our oscillators are on fire on the yearly chart. So look at that six month, four hour chart. So she was slipping downhill until when? It was about uh, the 12th. We got about two weeks ago, she started to climb. So we've got about 14 day run here. She started off down at uh, five cents and she's gotten up to 15 cents right now, hitting a high of 20 cents. So she's been between 300 and 400% gains over the last two weeks. And it looks like she's still growing. All of our oscillators are pointing up. Everything is pointing up. Doesn't look like anything is coming down right now. 20 day, one hour look. There's our low. She's at five cents going sideways. Got on top of the 50. She bounced off the 200 once. Got a good jump off of that and hasn't even touched anything. Not even the 20. She is starting to ride high. She's got some big bars right now. I would expect she's going to pull back a little bit, but our oscillators are still very strong. All of them are pushing up and in the red. Five day, five minute. All right, at least we had that pullback. She's above her 50. She's bouncing off of that 50, nice and firm, right in her nine day. She did hit a high, hit her head on the ceiling, right? And she's pulled back. She's above her nine day, so it wasn't a fall. That's just a pullback, and I would expect her to get right back to climbing. All of our oscillators say she had a drop there, and that's all they're showing right now. But I like what's going on. She's aligned herself with other companies, gotten 50-50 deals with them. That means she's going to make half. As soon as the other companies are making money, she's making money too. So things look good here. The charts are set up. The news is sitting there. Companies are backing her up. I think she's got a real good chance. Put BCII on your watch list. You probably won't be sorry. <laughs> Changing gears now, we're going to take a look at a penny stock on the major exchange. This is sticker CTV Innoved Core. God, do I like her chart. It is that atypical breakout chart with the 200 day SMA coming down, the price up underneath, about ready to slice it and take off. All we're looking for is a catalyst. Well, CTV has got lots of filings and news, any of which could launch this chart. So CTV, she finished today on Friday at $1.32 with 10% gains. So what is CTV all about? Well, they tell us over here that Innovid powers advertising delivery, personalization, and measurements of advertising across linear connected TV and digital TV for the world's largest brands. And as you're going to see when we look at the news, they're not a little operation. Their primary purpose is to measure the effectiveness of advertising so that companies can get the most out of their money and make the most out of their investments. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Another one, just about a 100% increase, going from roughly 650,000 to 1.2 million. Share structure for CTV. I did not look up the float on this one. Was not even curious. I don't know why. Outstanding share count, 136 million. So we know the float's less than 136 million. Looking at CTV's financials. Not looking bad. Jumping strong, going from 68 million to 90 million the next year to 127 million at the end of 2022. Looking at their quarterlies. They're doing an average of about 33 million a quarter. Just came out with their most recent financials for March. They fell just a tad bit down to 30 million. Looking at her disclosures, we've got some juicy stuff over here. We have some form fours, four of them. <laughs> form fours are used by the insiders whenever they buy or sell shares of the stock. And all of these are purchases. Shaney Gilead is a director. They bought 32 thousand shares. Another one of those form fours tells us that the CCO just bought himself 100,000 shares at over a dollar a share. Then we have the CEO. They just bought themselves 100,000 shares. 
And then we have Shaney coming back for seconds. They bought themselves another 28,000 shares. So you've got roughly 250,000 shares at about $300,000 that has been invested by insiders, the management of the company. All three of them bought that much right now for nothing? I doubt that. I'm sure there's a reason. All right, let's take a look at that news. So I've got three pieces of news here I want to share with you. All of these came out in May. CTV accounts for over half of the global video impression share, according to new Innovid study. Over half of the global impressions on regular and digital TV. They've got more than 50% of the global business. Like I said, they're not a little operation. And to give you a feel of the type of people they're doing business with, look at the next piece of news. Innovid and NBC Universal to deliver outcome measurements for local advertisers across CTV and linear. So they're going to be helping all of their smaller companies that are using them to measure their advertising. And there is, I think, 31 networks, 42 different channels, and six sport networks all involved in this deal. And then they had a piece of news that came out on the 19th, which isn't actually all that good. The company has received a notification from the New York Stock Exchange that they have not kept up with the minimum bid price requirement, meaning they can't go under a dollar for too long. Well, they did. They were under a dollar for 30 days. That's what the New York Stock Exchange said was too long. Now they get six months to fix that problem, six months from now, which takes you somewhere into November. But the way they've got to fix their problem, unlike most other companies, who have to close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. This company has to take an average of 30 days and have closed over a dollar over that 30 day period. So it's a little different for them. But that's really the only thing I see negative here. The company is dealing with big companies. Their revenues are growing. They've got over 50% of the global impression market right now and the charts are hot. So yeah, I think it's a good time to look at it. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are looking at CTV. This is a six month, four hour view, and I love these charts. You can identify these very easily, folks, right? 200 is here, the price has come up underneath and is knocking on its door. These are easier to second guess than say those first two stocks we looked at. They were already in the air, already flying. How high are they gonna go? Where are they gonna land? Who the heck knows? That's tough to second guess. However, this, this is just pulling up to the launch pad. It's just getting its feet up there right now so we know what's going to happen. We're getting ready for the launch, so we're looking at this at a perfect time. And these you can identify yourself, folks. Go looking through charts, pull up a scan, whatever your favorite penny stock scan is, and just start clicking through every chart and just look at them. And if you see something that looks like that, that could be a stock you should be considering. So this is CTV six month, four hour view. We got our high back here in November of $3.74. When she came under a 200 and pretty much stayed under there, hit a low of 75 cents mid-April. Went sideways, looks like she found her floor right here, and then she took off. And she has come right up, let me back this up, right to a very strong support resistance. All of this weight is sitting on it right there. And then all of this came up and got stopped right there. So we've got strength on both sides of this line. That is a strong support resistance. And right now we are at it. All the volume is starting to get stronger and stronger. As you can see, she's come out from underneath all her SMAs floating on the nine day. There is that support resistance. She's getting on top of that and she's getting ready to jump onto that 200. Oscillators, every single one of them is pointing up and on fire. We look like we're ready for a launch, Houston. 20 day, one hour view. I see our Red Bull. Our 200 day SMA was falling, leveled out over the low bubble and is now going up. All of our SMAs in proper position, smallest on the top, biggest on the bottom, and it is floating on the nine day SMA, hitting a high bubble after market hours. Oscillators, everything's great. All of them are pushing up right now, looking strong. Five day, five minute. Whew. 
Beautiful, low bubble in this corner, 94 cents, high bubble in that corner, ideal. That is $1.36. She got under the 200 once, but then she's just bounced off it a couple times, and now she's not even getting close to it. All she's hanging on to is the 50, and she is climbing. She hit a high here, she pulled back, landed firmly on that 50 day, which she respects, and she has bounced back up. And if you look at all of our oscillators, they did exactly that. They fell, bounced, and they're going back to climbing. This looks good to me, folks. I like everything we saw. Now, she does have some time that she's got to fix that minimum bid price, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'm thinking the biggest thing were those investments. Those Form 4s having $300,000 come in by the insiders of this company, the management themselves, something's going on. So I keep my eye on CTV. I think this could give us a nice run. She is in a hot position right now. I don't think there's any argument that all three of those charts are hot. CTV, that's an easy one to second guess. For the most part, she's setting up for a breakout. She's getting on the launch pad. You know what's next, the launch. The other two, ECDP and BCII, they're already in the air. How high are they gonna go? Where are they gonna land? We really don't know but they're showing a lot of potential strength. They've been running for two weeks. They're making deals with other companies. They've got low floats. So all we've got to do is keep an eye on them. So all three of them are worthy of being on your watch list and it wouldn't hurt to do some more due diligence. You may actually find you like one of them for a longer hold than just a quick day trade. Remember, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.